Hey, good morning. Thanks for joining us for the special education webinar. I'm Cherise Fleming Togoon, and I uh, work as a paralegal special education advocate here at the Atlanta Law Group, and am also a mother, <laughs> and know lots of other uh, parents out there fighting this battle. So um, I'm happy you could join us today. I just wanted to talk a little bit about what you can be doing during summer to prepare for your child's re-entry into school. I know um, it's usually an exciting time this year. It's even more fun than usual. Um, and a lot of you know kids are usually excited about Meet the Teacher. I can honestly say um, as a parent of, of two children with uh, special needs, it's, it's more stressful than it is exciting. But uh, I've learned a lot of tips along the way that I wanted to share. And um, the first and foremost is, uh, was actually my oldest son's uh, pre-K teacher that recommended this. Uh, create a bio for your child. So obviously you're going to have the legal document, you know, provided by the public school, which may either be the individual education plan or a 504 plan, depending upon your child's needs. Um, but I think this is a great idea and I've used it ever since. Just talking about your child, the personality, um, what your child likes or dislikes, um, because as you know, the IEP or the 504 plan can be very cut and dry and and not really provide a lot of personality. It's also a great opportunity to provide your contact information and um, open the lines of communication between you and the IEP team or the, the special ed team at your child's school. Um, it's, it's really, it provides um, a personal side to this whole process because I think what happens a lot of times, especially in the meetings, is you're just you know dissecting the child, dissecting the needs, and you're kind of forgetting that the human side of the child. So it's really important to provide that human connection to the teachers and, and, and to the whole team so that um, they understand they're not just working with a pile of paper here, <laughs> it's your child, which again, most team members aren't, but we just like to, it, it kind of helps with that process. So I usually put in information about, um, you know, favorite foods, uh, how we could even, you know, reward our child, what we do at home, so that they can, the, the team can also do that at school and um, really provide some consistency uh, for the child. And then as your child gets older, they can also participate in this. And a lot of um, my children's team members have encouraged, my oldest is now 13, and encouraged him to also um, create that bio and, and then eventually prepare your child to maybe uh, participate in the IEP meetings or the 504 plan meetings, that's the ideal. Um, Another um, you know, tip with that bio is when you're going to meet the teacher is I usually bring copies of that for all team members, even the specials. So while you may not meet the PE teacher and or the music teacher, um, have the copies ready. And then I always put a little note on the front, you know, confidential for you know, so-and-so staff only um, so that it's not being you know, shared and passed around the school. Um, I'll usually provide a hard copy to my child's classroom teacher, um, definitely the, the special ed lead if you get to run into them at Meet the Teacher, and or you can take copies and or email copies um, as you meet the team members throughout the year. Speaking about meeting the team members throughout the year, I think it's always a best practice to uh, maintain your communication via email. Um, you know, hopefully you won't have any communication issues, but <laughs> if I know this world well, you will. Um, so a lot of times I, I think, you know, team members trying to be helpful and I can think of a couple of experiences where I've received calls from teachers. Um, you know, that's okay for some things here and there, but when you're talking about accommodations, when you're talking about issues in the classroom, those all need to be documented really well. Um, so when and if you have any issues in the future, they're, um, you know, documented via email, you can pass on, you know, I, I spoke with Mr. or Ms. Smith on such a such date and um, informed me my child was doing this or not doing this. And I'm concerned because per the 504 plan and or the IEP, this is what should be happening. And um, you always want to err on the side of this is what appears to be happening <laughs> instead of jumping into accusing right away, which I know is so easy because these are our babies they're talking about here. Um, so I like to maintain communication via email. And then also when you're getting into, you know, the beginning of the school year, generally the team isn't going to want to meet until 
you know, eight or nine weeks into the school year so they can get some data and get information on how your child is performing. But don't hesitate to, you know, schedule and get something on the books because um, if your meetings are anything like the meetings I've attended, you know, you usually have 10, 12, you know, 14 different schedules to, to, ed, to, to coordinate. So it's important to get that on the books as, as early as possible. And then you can always obviously modify that. Um, summertime is also a good time to get any third um, party evaluations if those are needed. If um, for some reason you're not happy with the, the psychosocial educational eval that maybe the school's um, psychologist completed and or you maybe have some occupational therapy evaluations or physical therapy evaluations, whatever your child's you know, specialist may be, uh, the neurologist, the ophthalmologist, um, if you have some reports um, that need to be updated, um, the summer is the time to do that. Uh, depending upon what your child's conditions are and, and what the um, team needs. Um, I've had, you know, school, school members and counsel for the school where on the side of, well, we don't need all those documents um, because then it is with the child's record, you know, throughout the duration of school. Um, but I, you know, personally, and this is something, you know, you make as a parent, your decision will always like to provide more documentation to further support why the school needs to be providing the accommodations as listed in the IEP or 504 plan. So summer's a good time, um, obviously a little challenging right now, <laughs> but to schedule all those evaluations or at least um, start the referral process with a pediatrician to figure out, you know, what um, authorizations your insurance may need or um, even to budget accordingly for it. A lot of times these um, specialists may or may not be covered by insurance. Um, so you can, you know, budget accordingly, get those evaluations scheduled as needed so that when your child is back in school um, and you're scheduling that meeting, you have the further documentation to support, you know, what you really need for your child in the classroom. And also so the team members are fully aware, um, you know, sometimes our children are kind of hard puzzles to figure out. So it's hard to distinguish, you know, way, why they may not be performing to the level that you know, either the parent and or the teacher feels is, is possible. So it's important to have the solid uh, medical documentation to make sure that the team is aware of, of all the potential variables so that they can accommodate accordingly. And um, it's always a good idea to, to keep the meetings, um, <laughs> I know this is easier said than done, <laughs> lighthearted as possible. I, I know for me personally, it feels like my, my heart is being thrown on the table and, and, and dissected by everyone. Um, but, but remember, you know, what they're saying about your child isn't a personal attack. Um, some of them can get ugly. Um, and, and that's where we can come in if you need an advocate, if you feel like your, your concerns or your um, your wishes aren't being addressed, you know, maybe it's time to, to call in some help. Um, you as the parent are really uh, the best, you know, advocate for your child. You know your child better than anyone else, um, but sometimes it is helpful to get uh, an objective third party if things get contentious. Um, what I recommend is, um, you know, just being completely honest with everyone and, and letting them know that you're getting some assistance uh, depending upon the situation, of course, you do have to notify the school that someone may be coming with you to the meeting. And um, that way you're, you go in fully prepared and have a little bit more support. And then hopefully, um, you know, sometimes the team just needs a little, a little shaking up to, to come back around to the goal, which is your child and your child's success. I think uh, a lot of times with all the different personalities that come into play, um, people can get you know, stuck on, on their own agendas when really you just need to turn the meeting and the, the whole focus back to what your child needs to succeed in school. And, um, and when that does happen, it, it can be a very beautiful thing. <laughs> I've uh, been on the, the spectrum of it not working and everyone um, not working together. And then thankfully now with lots of work on the other side where when you've got a team working together for your child's best interests, um, you really get to see your, your child blossom and, um, and perform to their full ability, which is what we all want as parents. Um, so if you need some help to get there, we're, we're 
willing and able and um, you can definitely check us out and um, then we'll see if we have any comments. All right. All right, so I've got a, a question, someone worrying about um, identifying needs at school. Um, I can definitely reach out to you. Let me see if I can get some help from Steven here. Maybe unmute some questions. There. And then I could do this. Um, you can just do that. Okay. Thank you all for your patience as I figure this out. <laughs> all right. So um, when you're talking about your child and identifying needs and then a particular area, um, it, it's it's more about what is going on at the, the, the current school. And um, you can reach out to us on our website or um, send us an email, a request via our website, or Facebook. Um, if you're talking about a particular evaluation, um, it really depends upon what your child's conditions are and the specialists that you've been seeing now for your child. So what we can do is uh, maybe just reach out to us and, um, and then we'll reach out to you to dig a little further into what's going on with your children. I appreciate your questions. And this does bring up a lot of really good um, information. And sometimes it, it is hard to determine exactly, you know, what your child, what sort of accommodation is going to work best for your child. And a lot of times it's a combination of, you know, what have you used at home that works? And, um, and then what are the teachers? Because I've definitely been in that situation, you know, where you feel like, you're able to get some progress at home and or vice versa. They're able to get some progress at school, but, but not at home. And so it's really just a, a trial by error, trying to figure out exactly what you need uh, for your child to perform best in the classroom. And um, some other things that you can, you can do while you're getting ready to get back into school. I know that this is all, um, you know, extra special time of year. Um, and I'm sure you all received the notice yesterday about the schools reopening, at least in Orange County. Um, you know, everything is still kind of in the air. They are talking about opening the actual schools. What is important to know with special education is that your team um, and, and the schools are still required to file, to follow everything listed in that individual education plan or the 504 plan. So um, while we may still be doing a combination of, you know, in-person and distance learning, um, it is still a requirement that that IEP is followed. And if you need evaluations, I know that um, those are a little bit trickier right now with, with the school, but um, if you feel like your child hasn't been evaluated properly and or may need another evaluation, all of these processes still need to occur and there's still a timeline for them. Um, so if you have any questions about that, you can reach out to us as well. So as you're getting back into the school year, um, I know that a lot of times as your children get older as well, um, they're very involved and, and very active. Uh, definitely with the younger children, some, some good tips to keep those lines of communication open is um, you know, a notebook back and forth with the teacher. I know email is obviously preferred form of communication, uh, but sometimes if the teacher is juggling, you know, 15, 20 kids in the classroom and yours. Um, sometimes that's not always uh, possible. So I would um, recommend, you know, starting a little notebook back and forth. I know most schools have the planners right now for your children um, and, you know, the different behavior processes and charts and things in the classroom. Um, you know, if that's a concern, all of that can be well documented either, you know, in the child's planner, which has it already has a spot for you to sign planner slash calendar and or you can create you know another notebook um, for notes going back and forth with your classrooms teacher and or teachers 
and um, and that's also a good way to to document anything that may be happening at school that you're not aware of. And then as your child gets older, um, you know they also are able to voice their concerns or what may have happened. And again, you need to approach that in an email very carefully. But you know, I'm concerned. My child said this happened today. Just wanted to check check in, touch base, and you know maybe get the the other side of the story. I've definitely had some times where I needed to breathe <laughs> and, and calm myself and give it a day before I sent um, an, an angry email because um, unfortunately that just doesn't make um, a lot of progress when you have a very angry tone. I know they, they've happened, they will happen, but when you can just kind of stop and, and um, try and be objective as possible, give them the benefit of the doubt, um, unless of course, obviously, horrible things are happening um, and, and document, you know, your concerns in the email and, and ask for a follow-up. Um, a lot of times that follow-up may be hard depending upon how many people you've included on the email. That's why email is helpful. So um, if you haven't heard a response, you know, a week later, two weeks later, hey, just checking in. Uh, I haven't received a response yet. Um, you know, maybe if you're not getting any response, go ahead and request a meeting and they have to schedule that meeting. Um, and that's really the best way to, to have all of your concerns addressed. So I'll check if we have any other questions. All right. Well, I really appreciate everyone's time today. And um, again, you can reach out to us at the Orlando Law Group on our website, on Facebook. And um, we're really here to help you. Again, as, as a parent, I, I understand your situation and how hard it can be. And sometimes it is really helpful just to have a, a third party objective person there um, to really bring everyone together and, and find the common ground so that you can make progress and, and, and really look at what needs to be documented for your child to make sure that your child is succeeding. So we want to help you. We're here. Um, wish you the best with uh, this fun re-entry into the school year and um, reach out if you need anything. Thank you so much.